Okay, so this fifth example from chapter nine is for those of you who are starting to get tired of bars and beans and blocks. So here we have a chicken caught in a windstorm. Who knows, who knows why that chicken uh, has decided to stay out, um, but here he is. And we are trying to figure out the force of the wind if we assume that the wind is kind of constant and is acting at the center of the chicken's, um, the center of mass, basically, because it's, it's all over the chicken, but the net force of the wind, just like the net force of gravity, is acting at a point. We're trying to figure out how strong that wind has to be so that the chicken is kind of balanced in that weird way um, while not falling over one way or the other. Even before we write anything down, if we look at this picture, we will recognize a couple of things. First of all, if the wind is too strong, it will cause that chicken to, um, to rotate uh, from kind of being uh, held up by the wind to falling over, uh, rotating one direction. And if the wind dies down with the chicken angled like this, then the chicken will fall under the ground the other direction. And that's what we mean by the torques having to add up to zero, is that there are enough forces causing clockwise rotation as there are forces causing counterclockwise rotation. Okay, back to our original, um, original process. So we draw the real situation, and you are certainly welcome to draw a chicken. I am going to draw a leg of a chicken and a circle of a chicken. I think that's a, um, a known joke that physicists start with spherical cows. If, if you've never heard that before, Google spherical cow. There's, there's plenty of jokes at physicist expense. It's, it's fine. So our picture here is the chicken and the center of mass of the chicken is uh, acting at the center of the chicken and the wind is acting at the center of the chicken too. Okay, and we want to make sure we know that that, um, that foot is on the ground. Okay, so the force diagram, so it's the free body diagram of the chicken, is one that we actually have to think a little bit harder about than we may have in the first couple of problems because there are absolutely forces here that we have worked with in chapters four and chapter five that aren't specifically stated in the problem or the picture on our slide. So let's start with the ones that are drawn from our slide. We have the force of gravity on the chicken, which is M times G. And so in this case, for the two kilogram chicken, two times 9.8, we get 19.6. Newtons. We have that the force of the wind on our slide is pointing to the right, so we will have it pointing to the right. And if we decided that that was the only pair of forces acting on this chicken, then we would see that there's a problem here. The net forces can't add up to zero if it looks like this for our force diagram. The chicken would be sinking into the ground and it would be sliding to the right. So there are two forces that we haven't talked about yet. Um, in this problem that we know have to exist. So the first one that we're missing is, is pretty straightforward, I think. We have been working with the normal force since the very start of chapter four. This chicken is standing on the ground, which means the ground is physically pushing up on that chicken with the standard normal force. And I'm just gonna write the ground. And then if this was all we had, that chicken would be sliding to the right. So there is a force preventing that motion. That may start to ring bells for us that friction is preventing that chicken from sliding. If instead of a grassy meadow, this chicken were on an ice rink, who knows why, but if we put them on an ice rink, then that wind could actually have that chicken slide across um, the ground. Since they're not, friction is able to hold it in place. So friction, which is also happening at the ground. Okay, so that looks like a standard chapter four, chapter five kind of um, force problem. And now we can see that these are gonna be able to um, 
cancel each other out. There's some forces up and down, there's some forces side to side, and so we're pretty well set on this. So now we go to our torque diagram. So it is important for us to recognize something here that is true for this diagram that has not been true before. Our chicken is not perfectly upright and is also not perfectly flat. This is an object that is at an angle. So we need to draw that object, the simplified object now. We really don't want to draw a picture of a chicken down in our torque diagram. It has to be at an angle. We're going to see problems like this with angled bars. We're going to see problems like this with ladders. And we need to have that angled um, a bar there to help remind us that we're still looking for this idea of perpendicular. And that hasn't been a problem for us when all of our distances were side to side and all of our forces were up and down. But we are ramping up in difficulty and we're starting to think about forces that point in multiple directions and we have to use the appropriate distance to the axis. So step one is we draw the, um, the bar. Step two is we pick an axis. If we look at these four forces, the normal force is acting at the ground and friction is acting at the ground. So if we choose the axis to be at the ground, so the axis at the foot, that makes our um, calculation as easy as possible. Because now instead of four forces that we have to include in our torque diagram, this one is acting at the ground, and this one is acting at the ground, and so neither of those will have to be torque terms. It makes our math as simple as possible to choose the axis at the location with multiple unknown forces. Okay, so step one, the bar, step two, the axis. Step three, the forces. So in this example, we have the force of gravity of the chicken, 19.6 newtons, acting straight down. That's as straight down as it's going to be for my sideways view. <laughs> and the force of the wind acting directly sideways too. Now it is worth pointing out here that these two don't necessarily have to both be at the center of mass for similar problem types. There's going to be an example from the textbook that you might see where there's a horse leaning up against the wall. There's going to be the problem that we talk about in lecture with me leaning up against um, a, uh, a wall as well, where the force of the wall is not necessarily right at the center of me. I'm, I may be leaning my shoulder up against the wall and it's further along the, the bar. But in this case, that's kind of what our situation appears to be. And now this is extremely important. It hasn't been something we've had to be aware of really until this example. We need to remember that torque only happens when we are a perpendicular distance away from the axis. So when we are writing down the relevant um, distances here, and so for this particular example, I'm actually gonna use two different colors to help us um, pair these up properly. So for gravity, I'm gonna have it be blue so that we can put in the distance in blue for it as well. If this is an up and down force, perpendicular means we need a side to side distance. We need the distance to the axis horizontally because we have a vertical force. That's how we get that 90 degree angle. So in our um, slide, we have that that distance is nine centimeters or 0 0.09 meters. And then the wind side to side um, force, which means we need an up and down distance, that up and down distance for the wind is the 20 centimeters that we're told about in the slide, or 0 0.2 meters. So when we use our torques clockwise equal torques counterclockwise idea, we are still having to think about what clockwise and counterclockwise means relative to this axis. And it is still somewhat straightforward if we look at where the axis is, this downward force from gravity is trying to rotate the chicken counterclockwise. 
If the wind suddenly cut off, that chicken would rotate counterclockwise. It would fall over onto the ground. And if the wind got a lot stronger so that we were no longer in static equilibrium, it would blow the chicken over and cause it to rotate clockwise and then fall onto the ground. So for our clockwise torque, that is coming from the force of the wind. times the 0.2 meters uh, apart. And the counterclockwise um, torque is coming from the force of gravity. So 19.6 newtons times 0.09 meters. And so to solve for our unknown wind force, we just divide both sides by 0.2. And so our wind force We just use our calculator, 19.6 times 0.09 divided by 0.2, and we will get 8.82, 8.8 newtons. What you may notice here is that as long as the distances are all consistent, we could have kept this in centimeters and gotten the same result. We do want to try to train ourselves to stay in standard units in case we have to do something else with them. Um, but as long as everything's consistent, that would have canceled out either way. So the force of the wind here is 8.8 .8 newtons. Any stronger, the chicken blows over, and any weaker, the chicken is able to set its foot back down onto the ground. So poor chicken, but at least it's stable. All right, I will see you in the next couple of examples where they will, like this one, have forces that point in multiple directions because that's the level that we really need to get comfortable with but we'll see more examples of that as we go along. So I will see you in the next one.